All right. Good afternoon once again. Welcome to IELTS Speaking. We give you a lot of information in these training sessions. Literally hundreds of advices. And it is not possible to remember all of it just by listening or by watching the video. So that's why we record. So you can go back to it and listen again and again and refresh this information. And basically, I would say that we give you so many tips. And what this boils down to is the more tips you are able to implement and use on the test, the higher your score will be. That's what it comes down to. So it is to your advantage to study these videos and to make use of them. So today our topic is IELTS speaking. I'm going to give you a lot of do's and don'ts, what you should do and what you should not do. A couple of effective strategies in terms of preparation. And we're going to break this down one by one in terms of each task. We're going to talk about what you will be doing in each task. And then <clears throat> this is my website where you can watch the videos and get additional information for the preparation. So, part one. As you may remember, Speaking is done separately from the other three sections of IELTS, right? We have listening, reading, and writing done together. And then speaking is separate, which means that technically you're supposed to come fresh to the speaking part. And we're going to talk about format. How long should your answers be? What kind of skills do you want to develop to get a high score? And what are some of the best ways to prepare for that particular part of the test? So, a couple of numbers to get started. The first part of speaking is maximum five minutes. So we have three parts, so each one <coughs> is maximum five minutes, no more than that. Roughly ten questions, maybe eight, maybe twelve, more or less, give or take. What are the topics that are the most common ones as far as the first part? Now, I know if some spelling mistakes, this is supposed to be a smart board, right? Okay, well, sometimes it misunderstands. Technology is not always perfect either. Anyways, this gives you an idea of what are some of the most common topics when it comes to part one. As a matter of fact, there is one of the posts on my Facebook page, which is IELTS BMW Facebook page, where I give you a list of some of the most common topics. If I remember correctly, it has 120 topics. They are divided into three parts of the speaking section. So you have about 40 questions for each part. Now, we're talking about the first part, and the first part is all about you. The examiner is going to ask you questions about what you like, where you live, and what you do. These are some of the topics, just some of the examples. Now, how long should your answers be? <clears throat> That's an important question. For example, if the examiner asks me, where do you live? Should I say, I live in Bangkok? No. What should I say? I live in my house. I live in my house. Okay. <laughs> Is that long enough? You see, there are two kinds of mistakes that students make when it comes to how long the answers should be. 
one mistake is saying too little when your answer is too short. Where do you live? Bangkok. <laughs> and the other mistake is saying too much. Where do you live? Well, I live in Bangkok. You know, it's the capital of Thailand and it was built and, dun, 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 and the architecture and this king and that king. And you, too long. you are not a tourist guide, right? I just ask you where you live. So, in the first part, one or two sentences would be perfect. Not too short, not too long. And don't use memorized answers either. What do you mean memorized? Well, I'm going to talk about it in a minute. So let's move on. The first part is there to relax you, to prepare you for the main part of the speaking test, which is number two. So it's a warm up, kind of, before the second part. So just relax, be natural, it's a normal conversation. Just like any conversation that you would have with a stranger. What are some of the questions that people ask each other when they meet each other for the first time, right? Very basic questions and answers. Normal conversation. Another point I want to make is that eye contact can be pretty important. So, I know in some cultures, it is not seen as a <coughs> sign of uh, politeness to look a person in the eyes. Yes. So, that can get tricky, you know. IELTS is obviously the test of English. Your examiner is probably from one of the English-speaking countries. And in most English-speaking countries, it is considered polite to look at the person when you're speaking to them. Not staring, <laughs> but not staring at, it at the floor either, right? So normal eye contact, you know, just like I'm looking at you from time to time. Not staring and not ignoring. Again, avoid the extremes. Keep it natural. To go back to memorizing uh, answers, if you memorize the answers to the first part, it's easy to memorize because you know all the questions in advance, right? Most of the time. Well, the problem with memorizing answers in part one is that if you do that and you're able to produce complex grammar and academic vocabulary in the first part, and then you reach part two, and you get a surprise question, and you go back to your basic English, it will sound very unnatural. And the examiner will understand right away that your answers in the first part were memorized. So don't do that. Instead, practice common topics. OK? No memorization. And remember, examiner is a person. Examiner is not a tape recorder, not a microphone. Speak for two minutes, fine. <laughs> no, human interaction, OK? All right, let's move on. How do we practice for the first part? Small talk. All the topics that you find on that Facebook page, you can practice. Self-introduction, like I said, you meet a stranger, what are the questions they ask you, what are the questions you would ask them. Questions and answers, practice that. As you watch TV, movies, listen to the radios, pay attention to the way people speak, especially the natives. How do they ask those questions? Pay specific attention to the criteria that you are being evaluated on, which are vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, especially. And make sure that intonation 
is very, very important. You know, I have a whole training on just the intonation, but the idea of pronunciation, if the examiner cannot understand what you're saying, your grammar and your vocabulary can be perfect, but they won't matter if they don't understand what you're saying. So actually pronunciation is worth more than 25% of your mark because it is so important for all the other parts. Now, when it comes to speaking, the four criteria are vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, and fluency. What is fluency? How fluent, how smooth you are. Are you allowed to take pauses? No? Can you breathe? Yes. Yes, thank you. Well, we said it's a human interaction. Do humans breathe? Yes. Yes, yes. of course. So, take your pauses. Be natural, that's part of the drill. Part one, any questions before we continue? All right, let's continue. Part two. After the warm-up, the second part will also take maximum five minutes. You get a card with your question, with your topic. You have one minute to prepare. You can take notes if you want to, and you should. We're going to talk about some of the best ways of using that one minute to prepare your two-minute speech. Then you talk for two minutes. The examiner is not going to interrupt you. And one of the examples I like to use is a question about describe your favorite place as a child. What was it? Where was it? Why do you like it so much? And who did you go there with? Okay, that kind of questions. Now, once you get your card with your topic, I'm going to suggest the way to brainstorm in that one minute. Of course, this is not mathematics, but based on my experience and the experience of hundreds of students, this is a good way to prepare your two-minute speech for most of the talks. So, <clears throat> the five steps. When you have that one minute, try to write one or two words for each step of your brainstorm. And we're going to go over what exactly they mean. Now, remember, when you brainstorm, you don't have time to write full sentences. That's another mistake that students make sometimes. This is not an essay. You only have 60 seconds. So, keywords. Keywords that will make sense to you only. The examiner is not even going to look at your card. So, feel free to write whatever will help you, whatever will trigger some ideas. Keywords. Now, the example I gave about the favorite place as a child, all those points, where, what, why, when, you do not have to answer all those questions. Remember when we had the training about writing, describing the graph? Well, there in the task, they tell you what to do. Describe, summarize, explain, select, whatever. If they have three or four instructions, you must do all those things. If you don't, you will lose points on the task. Whereas in the speaking, all that you see on that card, that's just suggestions. It's for you. If you want, you can use that. If you have your own ideas to fill up your two minutes, up to you. Important to remember. 
So if you follow this little plan, it will give you ideas, it will give you vocabulary and also grammar.